of your work at Area 51 with Kraft? I wouldn't be a bit surprised. Um, Nor would I. Alex Pizarro said he felt we let them too close to our projects before, shortly before Alex passed away. Mm-hmm. But, you had some kind of connection with Ollie North? No, Oliver North, yes, yes, he's wrote me a letter. <laughs> he wrote you a letter? Yes, he's wanting some help and funding and stuff. And um, Yes, I was back in the 80s. Uh-huh. I got all sorts of strange mail. I got mail from the Shah of Iran, I think. I have never deciphered his card. The Shah I, of Iran. I got some letters or postcards or whatever they are from Bill Clinton. I don't know Bill Clinton, except, you know, he's the president of the United States. Yes, he was. And... I kind of liked him, you know. He's kind of an interesting person. And I opened up my veil box, and it says from the White House. And I said, oh, yeah, sure, probably my friend down there in um, in Los Angeles who has a house called the White House, and he promotes kombucha tea, which is a nutritional drink. And I yeah. open this thing up, and I'm thinking, uh-oh, this is real. This is really from uh, the White House. It's Bill Clinton and Hillary. Um, so. I, I assume that uh, some scientists, uh, when your field is operational, mm-hmm. have checked background radiation, right? They do all the, all the testing, yeah. Uh-huh. And what was found? Uh, was there any increase in background uh, radiation at all? Uh, the back, normal background radiation dropped down to only a few counts per minute. So it actually reduced the background radiation? Yeah, which I thought was rather intriguing. Was, that is intriguing, it's Very sort of intriguing. Almost a monkey wrench, and well, already is a sort of a Pandora's box of yes, hair pulling kind of experiments. All right, east of the Rockies, you're on the air with John Hutchinson. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Um, firstly, I, I greatly value your show, Art, and um, I had this question for John. I was curious about the apparatus that you use and the exact configuration or positioning of either Tesla coils or Van de Graaff generators. Uh, with respect to each other, to produce levitational effects? Okay. Very good question. Uh, they have to be ge- uh, very precisely um, put in a geometric patterns. Yeah. Uh, is, there, is there a way you can describe distances or, or the, the exact patterns they, they're in or you, you, how far apart they are? Um, actually, within, okay, how far apart they would be, perhaps, uh, maximum three feet. Three feet apart. Yeah, and I found always that things, units put in threes, uh, work best. Mm-hmm. And as advanced into this more and more, um, of course, I would put things in um, coils and Van de Graaffs and twos and threes. But a DC component is extremely important in this area, too, I found out in my later research. And that's pulsating DC spheres. And uh, Pulsating DC what? Spheres, like round, round balls? Yes. I would charge them up to 200,000 volts direct current through Siemens transformers. Right. And um, this would increase the effects enormously. Well, you're lucky you didn't fry yourself alive. Well, that's what uh, Dr. Kuhn says. Well, John, I don't know. You don't keep notes, and also I'm amazed that you're still standing here. <laughs> sure. Yeah, 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 I am too. Uh, West of the Rockies, you're on the air with John Hutchinson. Hello. Yes, uh, good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Uh, Dr. Hutchison, um, I'm really intrigued, as you were saying with this, and uh, the couple questions that I have, I hope I didn't I didn't see the first part of the show or hear the first part of the well, show. Well, I don't think it's doctor. He's a... Uh, uh, no. in, in Honorary. In, in, uh, Honorary. There Somebody you just sent me an AAAS uh, thing, and then it got sort of in a website there, and some lady printed it all up. Oh, that's yeah. where I saw it on the website. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I plunked my coloring book in block, so. <laughs> okay. I'd be quite a, the official doctor, let's go. <laughs> well, you should be. Um, but uh, the couple of questions that I had were um, the videos and the pictures are extraordinary, and I was just wondering, has uh, anyone, like I said, I missed the first part of the show, has any um, professional videographers gotten, you know, like pictures of, uh, I guess better video, and um, the pictures are great. But also, uh, do you have any plans on reproducing? Has anybody attempted to give you funding or something like that to reproduce this equipment? In other words, let's do it again? Oh, well, yes, definitely. There was talk in 1997, uh, a friend of mine, I really respect as a scientist, wrote to Prince Hans Adam Liechtenstein, who's known me for 12 years, 
or funding uh-huh. to get the Hutchison effect um, moved from Canada down to Bodega Bay, California, uh-huh. and set it up in operation so that the scientists, such as John Alexander or or Ken Shoulders or Dr. Elizabeth Ann Roger, can come in and see what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. So they can take notes and extrapolate and calculate certain things that I'm doing and get into a logical scientific format. Right, right. And uh, did you say 99? Uh, sorry, 1997. 97, that, and, and nothing ever came of it? or No, I have many letters from Prince Liechtenstein, and he was willing at the time to try something, but he then dropped it. Hmm. And, well, 99, I did able to duplicate a, a, U, a toy UFO uh-huh. right up to the ceiling right here. Where really? I'm yeah, <laughs> I cheated a little bit. I used extra high voltage overhead on the ceiling. So it wasn't really the true essence of... Okay, let me ask this, John. Thank you, caller. Uh, How much money right now would it take, do you think, uh, John, to put together the equipment to duplicate this or maybe even do it on a larger scale? I would have to let go by the words of Dr. Robert Forward in regards to, at this point, it would pretty well be into many millions to replicate that stuff I once had. Now, I... Put a lot in here. I do research in here, but it's limited because it's an apartment. And when I did the '99 experiment for Fox TV, I was lucky. It was a Canadian holiday, but um, the field affected the building across the street. And the police came and sirens, which I have on video. So you actually, affected the building across the street in what way? Um, we used to have funny things <laughs> happen in the '80s, and of course '99 is that when the field goes through into a, another structure, it moves objects around like dishes. Uh-huh. That would tend to upset people. They get angry, and when they look across here, they see this balcony of mine, which is an antenna farm from antennas that got off of Navy warships. And so you're the obvious target. No, oh, I'm the obvious target. <laughs> Uh, I, I know the, I, know, I know the feeling, believe me. First time caller line, you're on the air with John Hutchinson. Hello. Hello. Hi, where are you? I'm in uh, Morgantown, West Virginia. Okay. Yeah, I have a, just one simple question. I'm interested in trying to recreate some of the basic stuff myself. I mean, mm-hmm. one, is that feasible? And two, if so, how do I do it? All right. He wants to recreate. Is it feasible for him to try? I mentioned that I had an interesting talk with Ken Shoulders. Even on a smaller scale, John. Yeah. I would recommend um, start working with... Um, Tesla coils and Van de Graaff generators together. Okay. You may get some interesting results and expand from there. Okay. So what do I, like, like, what do I, like, just basics of what do I, what I would do with them? How do I make them interact? Just put them in proximity to each other and you could activate them? I would, you could do that, but I'd, I'd recommend highly um, follow your own instincts in this area. Okay. And your scientific wisdom. <laughs> okay. That's what I recommend. Um, Give it a try, caller, and let us know what happens. Oh, uh, most definitely. I'll be sure to. Okay. Very good. Uh, wild card line. You're on the air with John Hutchinson. Hello. Uh, all right. This is Steve in uh, Glendora. Yes, hello. Hey, you know, I happen to see that video, and I studied it quite closely when it ran on the Learning Channel, and I got the impression that it was the old Hollywood illusion where you construct your set upside down and you use magnets and gravity to manipulate an object before you remove the magnet and it falls to the floor. Now, that was the impression I got. Okay. I, I too, watched the video again and again, uh, caller, and the only problem I had with that, it could be a backwards video, except that several of the objects uh, move in a lateral direction uh, be- before they take off. No, not backwards. Literally, where you build the set upside down, like there, if I remember there was a trash can in the shot and all that, that stuff is nailed up basically on the ceiling, and then you film it so that it looks like it's right side up when in fact it's upside down. It, you it have a even, magnet on the roof holding the objects. You manipulate the objects with the magnet. They kind of dance around a little bit. You remove the magnet and it plummets to the floor, but it looks like it's falling up when in fact it's falling down. John? That's an interesting one. There. Um, what came to my mind was um, an old movie by Fred Astaire where he, he was uh, tap dancing on the walls of a building. Is that what you mean? Yeah, well, something similar to that. But now, here's the thing. 